And I think to suggest that public policy is not um, a factor in wealth creation is ludicrous. Um, we've already, we've spent a lot of time talking about tax policy. Um, public policy absolutely is a pathway to the wealth creation. Um, and I think to suggest otherwise is not plausible. In a city like New York, where food can be expensive, where wages can be low, you can work 40, 50 hours a week and find it very difficult to rent an apartment that has heat and hot and cold running water, that has proper ventilation, proper windows and doors. I mean, the question is, does continuing to use public money to subsidize apartment buildings, continuing to use public money so that people can shop at, at local grocery stores. What does that do to the marketplace, Mario? Would there be lots more cheaper food if there was no food stamps? Would there be cheaper apartments to rent if there was no government support of housing? Well, there's no question that in general, government subsidies drive up prices because people who are selling goods know that they can charge more because there's a subsidy behind it. I mean, that's, that's the way some of this stuff works. I think that what we need to do in this, we're at a crossroads in this country. This is a historic moment. And what we need to do is we need to look at everything from the top down. It's not just food stamps. It's, it's, you know, it's not just social welfare programs. It's not just one piece, it's everything. When you look, look at you know, the, the subsidies behind all these things, when you look at the fact that a lot of these materials are taxed, I mean, you have everything here has gone through, you know, this table, the, this mug, the paper, has gone through multiple layers of taxation that all drives prices up. So when we're trying to create a, you know, a, a system where people on the lower income can actually afford things, again, we have to look at, you know, what they're consuming. Food prices are more expensive in New York City in part because of taxation. Taxation on the products themselves, taxation on the transportation to get those, to, to get the food into the city from the farms where they grow or from, you know, distributors or what have you. Uh, I mean, all those things are, are things that we need to look at because we're on a road to financial ruin in this country, and if we don't get serious about real reform, then we will end up like Greece. We will end up like Portugal, these countries that are either bankrupt or on the verge of bankruptcy. We're knocking on the door, and we have to get serious about this. But are we looking at everything? Are we looking at everything or just some things? Are we looking at the people that we saw in these pieces doing with less but it's absolutely impossible to ask wealthy people for more. Uh, are we looking at a situation where we say, yes, fewer regulators watching what comes out of America's smokestacks. God can't have that, but we can continue to pay defense contractors uh, unquestioned amounts of money. We can't do without this second engine for the Joint Strike Force bomber and, and you know, is it really everything that's on the table? I guess that's the, the heart of it. Well, it needs to be. Absolutely mm. not. I mean, let's be real here. Nobody is getting rich off uh, food stamps. Nobody is getting rich off Medicaid. We're talking about the average food stamp benefit is at $21 a day. No, but part of their point is that people are staying poor. Not nobody's getting rich. Everybody understands nobody's getting rich on food stamps. But they're staying poor. Well, on I would say, in putting everything on the table, let's look at our, our structures and systems that are keeping people in poverty, which is not, certainly not, grow, which is growing. And I would suggest that not only is it, I would suggest that not only is it sort of our tax policy, wealth in this country is very concentrated. And, we, and you're right, it is a, a matter of our priorities and what kind of nation do we want to be. Do we want to be the type of nation where opportunity is available for everyone? And under, under the budget plan that was passed in the House, um, the priority there, it looks like it's not. So certainly everything is not on the table. Everything is not even close to being on the table in terms of closing the wealth gaps and disparities um, among low-income people and people of color, which are disproportionately not only impacted by the recession, um, these cuts are coming at a time where families can least afford it. We're, we've just gotten unemployment right around 9%. And this is not the right time for, um, to ask families to disproportionately sacrifice um, to close budget gaps. It's Rich, you were going to say? Yeah, I, I, a couple of things. I think, one, go back and, you know, get on, get on YouTube or Google when you go home and, and go back and look at movies or videos from the era of the Great Depression. 
We put in the social safety net of Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and the affordable housing and uh, food stamp programs we're talking about so that we didn't have 10,000 people sleeping on the streets of New York. And we did that for those people, and we also did that because we as a society found that to be unacceptable. So we need to reform and, to use a Clinton-era term, reinvent these programs and do them smarter, eliminate fraud, waste, and abuse. But at the end of the day, we as a society have already decided we don't want to go back there again. We want to protect those people. We want to protect our society. That's not who we are. On the other side of the equation, um, in order to get where we need to go, we need to encourage economic growth. We need to have a smart economic policy. And, you know, we've been talking about the House budget. We have on the Senate side a gang of, of six senators, uh, you know, three Republicans, three Democrats, led by Senator Warner from Virginia, Senator Chambliss from Georgia, who are working on an all-of-the-above approach to, you know, really put on the table solutions that hopefully will make a bipartisan difference. And there is some hope here that at the end of the day we can come to an agreement that can do what we are all talking about, which is preserve what we value in terms of private enterprise, but at the same time, you know, save a social safety net that has proven time and again to be essential. If we had not had the net in place that we're talking about, the Great Recession of 2008, 2009 would have looked a lot worse than what it ended up being.